I am thoroughly enjoying the Bram Stoker Awards weekend this year. It's, it's so much fun, it's fast, it's, it's, it's engaging, everyone's having a great time. And I feel like a nice balance between, you know, I'm a, I'm a guest, yes, but I'm also a fan of the, of the genre, so I'm having a blast. Actually, my, my favorite part of this weekend has always, and it's, it's the th same thing that's a favorite part of every weekend, is, is interacting with the other uh, folks here. It isn't just talking to, to my colleagues, it's, it's not just talking to the readers, we're all fans of the genre, so we get to officially geek out on, on, on horror uh, and, and just have a blast. And every time I come to one of these, I learn more about horror. I always think I know a lot about horror until I come to one of these, and then it just deepens my, my understanding and appreciation of it. My first horror convention was actually the World Horror Convention Stoker Weekend in 2007, which is, uh, was up in Toronto. I was nominated for two Stokers for uh, the same book, Best Novel and Best First Novel. And my, my favorite memory is I, the first person I met when I walked in was F. Paul Wilson, who uh, I, I loved his books and I introduced myself. And he said, oh yeah, you're up for two Stokers. And I said, yeah, it's two different categories. I said, yeah, because you yeah, have no chance. Um, Later on, what, what he explained was that uh, usually if you're nominated in multiple categories, uh, it tends to split the vote and you have less chance of winning. But uh, I did in fact win one of the categories and, and he was very enthusiastic in his support. But I did want to kill him at the moment, he said that. <laughs> uh, right now I'm on tour for a couple of different products. I'm on tour for Extinction Machine, which is the fifth in my Joe Ledger thriller series, Weird Science Thrillers. I'm also gearing up for the tour for Fire and Ash, the fourth and final book in my uh, post-apocalyptic Rot and Ruin series. And I've been touring uh, libraries pretty heavily, just talk, talking to people about literacy and, and books and you know, my books and others, just you know, the, the love of books. I encourage everyone who, who loves horror to join the HWA. It was the first professional organization I joined. And I, I can't begin to put a price tag on how much this has uh, pushed my career forward, uh, increased my visibility, allowed me to meet like-minded people, uh, given me the opportunity to meet friends and make, I mean, enduring friendships, and, and just helped me um, cultivate an understanding of uh, genre fiction, horror, and its related fields as, as, a, as a legitimate professional thing. And uh, all of those are wonderful qualities, and I got the biggest chunk of that from joining the HWA. It, it propelled me forward. Kids love horror, and they also love, by the way, post-apocalyptic and dystopian fiction um, for a different reason than adults. When adults, uh, adult fiction that's, that's, that's apocalyptic tends to end badly. You know, it's, it's we, we had the world, we tried to fix it, we failed to fix it, and this is what's going to happen. Kids have a completely different take on it. They're being handed this broken world, and they said, okay, well, you guys couldn't fix it, but we're, we're younger, smarter, more energetic, we are going to. So that fiction tends to be built around uh, hope and optimism. They, they're learning, they're smart, they're, they multitask, they, they can work together, much more than adults give them credit for, and they see uh, the world as something that they're going to be able to improve and move forward and have a life in, a meaningful life in. So horror for them is a way to uh, experiment with how to, to take fear and conquer it. And that is an amazingly upbeat and practical thing, and it gives me great optimism for the next generation.